Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers and students, welcome back to our learning symposium on air for the subject commercial correspondence. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about terms. After finishing the lesson, you're expected to deal with the following. Terms of delivery, terms of payment, terms of discount, acknowledgement of orders and invoices. Now we start our lesson with the first point, terms of delivery. What do we mean by business terms? In fact, when you write a quotation, an offer, or order, you need to use different terms regarding delivery, payment, and discount. These terms identify the right and obligations of both parties involved in the business transaction. These terms are usually discussed by both buyers and sellers using inquiries and quotation letters. Once they settle down these things, this agreement becomes binding. Now the first type of this term is known as terms of delivery. The following are all terms of delivery used upon agreement between the parties involved in the business transaction. Terms of delivery means where should the buyer receive the products? Should he receive them at the seller's shop or at the port of the seller in the seller's country? At the port of the buyer in his country or at the buyer's shop. Our first delivery term is called loco. The buyer here receives the goods at the shop, factory, or store of the seller. The buyer pays all the expenses spent on carrying the goods from the seller's place to his own. Let's have a look at these expenses paid by the buyer on transporting the product from the seller's place to the buyer's own place. A. The portage. The portage is the cost of carrying goods by hand. B. Carriage. This is the cost of carrying goods by cart or lorry for short distances. C. Loading expenses. These cover the cost of lifting goods from the docks onto the ship. D. Forwarding agent's commission. A seller might sometimes employ a forwarding agent. His duty is to look after the dispatch of goods from the seller's place to the ship. The commission is the sum of money paid to him for doing this job. E. Ferrite. Right. This is the cost of carrying goods by ship from the port of the seller, departure, to the port of the buyer, arrival. F. Unloading expenses. These are the cost of transferring goods from the ship onto the docks. G. Custom duties. Now these are the taxes imposed on imported goods to the country. H. Portage. Carriage and carriage. These are charges paid for getting goods from the buyer's port to his shop. I. Clearing agent commission. A buyer may sometimes employ a clearing agent whose job is to clear the goods to his warehouse. The commission is the sum of money paid to him for doing this job. Now, these are all examples of expenses paid by the buyer under the term loco. Now, as we drop down with the terms, we will notice that the seller will pay part of the expenses. The second term of delivery is referred to as FAS, free alongside ship. According to this term, goods are delivered to the buyer on the docks of the seller's port. The seller spares the expenses of portage, cartage, and carriage. The buyer, on the other hand, pays the other expenses. The third term of delivery is called FOB, free on board. Under this term, 
goods are delivered to the buyer on board of the ship at the seller's port. The sellers bear all the expenses of portage, cartage, and carriage, and loading and the remaining expenses will also be paid by the buyer. The fourth term of delivery is called S and F or SIF. Both terms here means that goods are delivered at the port of the buyer. The seller pays the expenses of portage, carriage, carriage, loading, forwarding agents, commission, and for rights. The price of goods include these expenses as well. This also covers the expenses of insurance and for rights. The fifth term of delivery is the Franco, fright and lost. Under this term, goods are delivered at the buyer's place. The seller will pay all the previous expenses of transporting the goods, example, portage, carriage, loading, freight, until custom duties. Finally, the sixth term of delivery is referred to as FOT, free on truck. According to this term, goods are transferred directly by trucks from the seller's place to the customer's warehouse. Under this term, all the expenses are paid by the seller and will be reflected in the price of the goods. Dear students, we come now to discuss the second part of the lesson, terms of payment. Terms of payment are generally used in foreign transactions. Sellers and buyers usually discuss methods of payment in inquiry and quotation letters. These terms tell whether the buyer is to pay the cash to an agent or through the bank. They also explain when and how the buyer can get the shipping documents. These documents are necessary to clear the products. Let us see the first term of payment. One, CWO, cash with order. The buyer sends the money with order of goods. This is equivalent to payment in advance. Number two, COD, cash on delivery. The buyer pays the money either to the post office and receives the parcel or to the bank and receives the shipping documents. These documents again help him to clear the goods. Three, CAD, cash against documents. The buyer pays a side draft drawn on him by the seller and then he receives the shipping documents. Also known as DP, documents against payment. Number four, DA, documents against acceptance. The buyer here receives the shipping documents when he accepts a bill of exchange drawn on him by the seller. Five, bank acceptance against documents. The buyer opens a letter of credit CD in his bank. The letter of credit covers the cost of goods and bank informs the seller through a mediating bank that a credit has been opened in his favor and promises to send the money to the seller upon receiving the shipping documents. Now, dear students, we come to discuss the third part of our lesson, terms of discounts. The discount is a reduction in the price offered by the seller to the buyer. There are three kinds of discounts, trade discounts, cash discounts, and quantity discounts. Each one of them is given to the buyer to accomplish certain aims. The first type of these discounts is known as trade discounts. Trade discount happens when the seller allows the buyer a reduction in the gross sales price. That is why this discount is commonly quoted in percentages. Companies use trade discount to either avoid frequent changes in catalogs, to code different prices for different customers, 
or to hide the true invoices prices from competitors. The second of these discounts is called the cash discount. Cash discount is offered to customer to encourage quick payment of bills. Cash discounts may be given only if payment is received within a specified period of time, generally 30 days or less. The third type of discount is known as quantity discount. To encourage customers to buy more quantities, the seller offers quantity discounts. The percentage of this discount varies according to the amount of quantity of the goods purchased. Now, dear students, we come to the fourth point of the lesson, the acknowledgement of orders. We know that the order is a letter sent by the buyer to the seller, asking the supply of a definite quality of goods. In nowadays competitive markets, it becomes a rule for companies to send an acknowledgement of an order as soon as they receive that order. This acknowledgement informs the customer that the goods will be sent off at once or his order is receiving their attention. Acknowledgement of orders are also used when the required goods need some arrangement before they can be sent or are not available at the moment, promising, of course, to dispatch them as soon as they are ready. Our last point in this lesson, dear students, is about the invoices and statement of account. The invoice is a detailed list of goods purchased, showing their nature, quantity, price, and also terms of sales and delivery. The invoice serves as a document sent by the seller to the buyer, requesting payment of money for the goods supplied to the buyer. The seller can also send the invoice together with the goods, and sometimes it can be sent separately later. The invoice achieves three general purposes. One, it informs buyer of the amount due. Two, it enables him to check the goods delivered. Three, it is the source of keeping records of purchases and sales for both the buyer and the seller. On the other hand, if the seller is dealing with a regular customer, there is actually no need to the invoice. In a set, the buyer has an opened account with the seller, where invoices are charged to this account. Later, at the end of the period, can be a month, quarter year, or a year, the seller provides the customer with the statement of account, showing all the transactions occurred between them for that period. Now, this statement sought with the balance owing at the beginning of the period. During the period, all amounts of invoices for goods sold are added to the balance, and all amounts of payments are deducted from it. Later, the statement ends with the closing balance, that is, the amount owing at the end of the period. By this, dear students, we come to the end of the lesson. Let's recap our lesson we learn about various forms of business terms, mainly terms of delivery, terms of payment, and terms of discounts. We then define the acknowledgement of order and discuss the importance of both invoices and statements of accounts. Now, our last symposium on air will be about the other type of correspondence. Until then, I wish you all the best. Thank you for watching us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.